Hey guys, Emmy here, also known as 8 Final Low, bringing you all another video. Today's video is going to be my response to the Quarantine Vinyl Tag 2020. This tag was started by Dylan over at Noble Records. 20 questions, I thought it was a lot of fun and uh, definitely got my gears turning so I knew that I wanted to get involved. So uh, without wasting any time here, let's get right into it. Question one, show a favorite record from my home state. We all know where this is going. I'm an Illinois girl. Guess who's an Illinois band? Rockford, Illinois. There is no other album or band that I could possibly choose for this question. I show this all the time, but I'd be lying if I didn't pick this for this question. Cheap Tricks, self-titled debut from 1977. Sons of Rockford, Illinois, and definitely my favorite album to come out of, of my home state of Illinois. Question two, an album that I highly recommend. I am going with 10 Years After, Cricklewood Green. This is their fourth studio album from 1970. What a amazing album. Space and Time is good, Undead is good. This is their best in my opinion. And uh, great British blues band if you aren't really too familiar with 10 Years After. But the guitar work, Elvin Lee's guitar work on this album is out of this world. It is so good. So if you haven't heard this album, definitely recommend picking it up. You will not be disappointed. Question three, a tip for a beginner or someone that's just starting to get into record collecting. I've said this to my friends that have been starting to get into record collecting or friends that want to know more about it. It is all about quality. Quantity is, doesn't matter. Quantity is fun. Quantity is very fun, but it's not fun if you can't play it or, or it's not fun if the album sucks and you don't like it. Uh, so it's all about quality. It's all about what you enjoy and it's all about what you enjoy to listen to, whether it's the music itself and or something that just sounds really good and isn't popping and cracking every second. So all about the quality. Like I said, quantity will eventually come as you continue to build your collection, but quality is what matters. Having a hundred records of albums that you love and that sound good is way better than having a thousand records that sound like crap or that you don't like. So quality over quantity every time. Question four, an album that got me in deeper music. Gotta show this one. John Mayles, Blues Breakers with Eric Clapton. Uh, my mind was blown the first time that I listened to this record. Absolutely blown. I realized after listening to this record that there was a lot more out there in the music world besides classic rock and besides the bands that I grew up with and was familiar with. This completely, completely jump-started my interest in the British blues genre, which I have grown to love so, so much. Of course, I was familiar with Eric Clapton. I had never heard of John Mayle before, before I listened to this album and didn't know that Eric Clapton was doing stuff like this, you know, before Cream and Slow Hand. But like I said, this album really jump-started my love and passion and interest into the British blues genre and just made me want to know more, led me to discovering more, and just really kind of opened the gates to that adventure and exploration into a whole different world of music. So that, I wish I could listen to this album for the first time again, and I know you never get that back, but I just remember how blown away I was when I first listened to this album. Question five, show an obscure album. We're going with Split by The Groundhogs. This was released in 1971. What an amazing year of music in 1971. And this album really does show that. The Groundhogs are severely underrated in my opinion. They're a British blues sort of sounding band with elements, especially in their later albums of progressive rock, uh, but definitely heavy on the fuzz guitar. Tony T.S. McPhee, another severely underrated guitarist one of my favorite guitarists, probably in my top 15, if not top 10. Huge fan of the Groundhogs. Love Tony McPhee. I've shown the Groundhogs before. I've shown their album, Thank Christ for the Bomb, a few times on my channel, but haven't really shown this one. Split, 
Thank Christ for the Bomb is probably my favorite Groundhogs just because of sentimental reasons. That was the first album that I listened to from them. It has that history connection and I'm a huge history buff. But Split, I can definitely say is their best work. So if you haven't checked out the Groundhogs, definitely go do it. If you like heavy fuzz guitar, if you like blues rock, if you like elements of prog and psych, you will dig this album. Like I said, Tony T.S. McPhee, his guitar playing, absolutely phenomenal. I cannot recommend this album more, but it's also obscure and I'm sure a lot of you have not heard of this. So going with this for number five. Question six, a band or artist whose work you try to collect all of or, or have all of? Obviously I can go with Cheap Trick, but for this question, I'm going with Rory Gallagher. You all know how much I love Rory Gallagher. And not only have I collected and am trying to collect all of Rory's solo albums, but I also have Taste's debut album and a Taste's second album on the boards. So really anything that Rory has been a part of, I am trying to get into my collection. There are still plenty of solo Rory Gallagher albums that I need to add into my collection, but uh, that's a work in progress and eventually I will get there. So I adore Rory Gallagher and uh, definitely at some point we'll, we'll own all of his, his work. Question seven, the second album is better than the first. I'm going with Eric Clapton's 461 Ocean Boulevard. I love Eric Clapton's debut solo album. Don't get me wrong, definitely captures that bluesy sound that you want from a Clapton record. And I love Slow Hand as well, phenomenal work. But this is by far my favorite Eric Clapton solo album. S kicks off with Motherless Children. What an opener. You all know what I'm talking about if you've heard of this album, but if you have not listened to this album and or the first track, go check it out. It's awesome. It also has my favorite Eric Clapton song on here, which is Let It Grow. Solo Eric Clapton, that is. It's called Let It Grow absolutely beautiful song. And then of course it has his cover of Bob Marley's I Shot the Sheriff, which is probably a favorite for most off of, off of this record, although it is not my favorite. But I recently showed this album in a collaboration that I did with Dylan, the record spinner, and my guitar player 07, where we talked about the year 1974. So if you haven't checked out that collab video, I'm gonna link it down below definitely go check it out. It was a lot of fun. Some of the youngest members in the VC just talking about music from the 70s. Awesome. So, um, but in terms of second album is better than the first, Eric Clapton, 461 Ocean Boulevard. All right, question eight, we have a whack-a-mole. So random pick created by the one and only Mazzy. Gonna shut my eyes and uh, we'll see what, what random pick we have. We have, all right, Lou Reed, Rock and Roll Animal. This is another one that I could have talked about in my collab video on 1974. I think that's when this live album was released. Um, a classic record that either everyone has heard of and or everyone needs. So, uh, like I said, great album by Lou Reed, really coming into his own post Velvet underground awesome stuff all right question nine is an album that i've listened to the most in my life it's not cheap trick it might be but i'd be surprised if it's not this one this is the ides of march vehicle i've shared this story so many times on my channel and if you are not familiar with it subscribe and i'm sure i will share it again um but the ides of march and this album this is what started it all for me in terms of my love and passion for music and older music. The Ides of March were my band growing up, a band that I would see every summer, every weekend, every summer, and just completely fell in love with music and older music and their music. But I can't, I can't tell you how many times I listened to this album and just listened to Ides of March in general while growing up from eight years old to maybe 15, this is what I was cranking out every day. So this is definitely an album that I've probably listened to the most in my life. 
it may change since I really started to get um, and fall, get involved in and, and fall in love with Cheap Trick over the past five five years or so, but this is what started it all. So going with this one. Question 10, a crazy story. This question isn't really crazy, but I find it um, amusing. So I was watching one of Mazzy's videos. It was probably 10 or 11 o'clock at night. This was uh, last summer. And he had been responding to a thread or a tag or whatever it was. And one of the questions asked, an, show an album that everyone should own. And he showed a Fairport convention album that I had never seen or heard of before. And like with most Final Community videos, if someone is really passionate about a record, I will put it in my Discogs want list. So I put in my want list, watched a few more videos, and went to bed. The next morning, around 8, 9 o'clock, so just under 12 hours later, I went to a local thrift store, as I like to do sometimes, uh, you know, in my spare time to see if they have any records. And this store was a store that I never find albums in. Again, less than 12 hours from when I watched Mazzy's video, what do I find at that store that never has albums? That same exact Fairport convention album. It was so weird. I thought it was hilarious. I came home right away and made a video about it. Um, but it's one of my craziest, most amusing stories that I have. Question 11, a collecting pet peeve. Just gonna leave it simple uh, at this. Stickers, price stickers, hype stickers are fine. Price stickers on album covers. Even worse when the price stickers are used at stores to cover up a rip or tear on the cover. But just a sticker in general, price tag, tag sticker on a record, major cringe. One of my biggest pet peeves in, in record collecting. 12, an album or genre people would be surprised to know that I like. I don't talk about this genre a lot on the channel, not because I don't want to share it, but just because it just never really comes up. I love punk music, whether it's proto-punk, punk rock, hardcore punk, pop punk, whatever it is, I really do enjoy punk music. Love it. Grew up listening to it, especially in middle school and early high school, freshman, sophomore year. Really got into kind of pop punk and punk rock and then started to branch out and explore more, especially in the proto-punk genre now. Love some of the early stuff. Cheap Tricks first debut album from 1977 definitely has that element of proto-punk in there. Um, but yeah, I don't really talk about it or show a lot of punk-related albums on the channel. Again, not because I don't want to, but it just never comes up. So I'll just show you some of the albums I have. I probably have maybe around 50 in terms of pop punk, punk rock, and uh, hardcore punk but I'll just show you and give you a little taste of what I have from that genre. And if you would like to see a video where I show more albums from that genre, let me know. But we'll just kind of go through here. These have the sleeves on them, so ignore that. This has a Dexy's Midnight uh, Runners connection. So question 13 was show an album from the year I was born. Um, I was born in 1997 and one of my favorite albums from that year is Destination Failure by The Smoking Popes, a Chicago-based punk rock pop punk band. And although I do not have the full LP of that particular album, I found the 10 inch EP leading up to that album by The Smoking Popes, uh, I Know You Love Me, which is probably the most well-known track off of that album and it's on this nice uh kind of green green wax there but I found this at a thrift store for 99 cents 99 cents which was really cool so yep going with Destination Failure by Smoke and Popes. 14 is show 10 inch records and share your opinions on them so I don't really collect 10 inch records I only get them if it's the only format that I can get certain material that I can't get anywhere else and or it's Cheap Trick related. So the only 10 inches that I have are Cheap Trick related. Uh, so I'll show you what I have. This is Found All the Parts. This is an EP that came out in 1980 
and I have a couple of copies and still need to get a cop couple copies of this album because the labels are all a little different in terms of band members on the label. So for example, this one might have Bunny on one side and Rick Nielsen on the other side of the label. This one might have Rick Nielsen on one side and Tom Peterson on the other side. I'm missing Robin and Bunny and so on and so forth. Um, so that's all I have uh, for those. And then I still need to get more. This one came out in 2016. This is a play off of Found All the Parts. This is Found New Parts. And it was an EP for their 2016 Bang Zoom Crazy Hello album. And then this one is Candy Gold, which Bunny Carlos played drums on. This was released in 2010, I think. Uh, 2011. And uh, this was a little side project that he did. It's actually really good. So if you ever come across this, you can get this for really cheap. And you're a big fan of Bunny Carlos or just really good music and drum work in general. It's really good. Um, so yeah, those are the only 10 inch records I have. And I'll collect more Cheap Trick, but other than that, I don't really care. <laughs> so, 15, share an interesting fact about an album or song. So this is a bootleg. This is the NAS, and I'm keeping the cover on just because this is just cardboard paper, this here. Um, you might be familiar with the band NAS with Todd Rundgren. However, although it looks like it, the recordings on this album itself are not actually Naz. Here's the fun fact, and of course there's a Cheap Trick connection. Rick Nielsen, Stooky from the Naz and Mooney, uh, formed a band in the early 70s called Sick Man of Europe. Sometimes, because of that connection to the Naz, sometimes they would play under the name Naz. So these recordings in this album are actually recordings of Sick Man of Europe, which is Rick Nielsen and then a couple members of this band. So it's not actually Naz with Todd Rundgren. So there's a fun fact for you. A really, really interesting bootleg and uh, early material from the one and only Rick Nielsen. 16, show an album with an animal on the cover. I'll do you one better and show five animals on one cover. 17, show an album with crazy artwork. I just listened to this album for the first time in a really long time the other day, and I was always captivated with this artwork and playing it again, pulling it out and playing it the other day really reminded me how much, one, I love the album and two, love the artwork. This is Baker Gervitz Army Elysian Encounter. Fantastic album. Ginger Baker, you cannot go wrong. So if you're a huge fan of Ginger Baker and his drumming, you have to check out this album. But look at the artwork. Eighteen, show a really good album you can find for cheap. This one's a dollar bin album. One of the best live albums though in my opinion. This is Fog Hat Live. Has all the classics. They just absolutely nail it in this album. And like I said, this is easily uh, an album that you can find in the 99 cent bin at a local store. So if you haven't checked this album out, definitely pick it up. Like I said, you can get it for a buck. Can't go wrong. 19, show an album with an acquired taste. This is a more recent album from 2018 that's alternative indie, has that kind of element of punk rock, pop punk a little bit but more alternative in this particular band that this individual artist plays in. She's also from the band Against Me. I'm talking about Laura Jane Grace and her side project called Laura Jane Grace and the Devouring Mothers. This is a signed copy that I got at a show that I saw them play. One of my friends is a huge fan of Against Me and Laura Jane Grace. And I went with him to go see the band live fantastic. It was such a fun time. Um, and I ended up buying this album. It's a tour exclusive colored vinyl. And I got it signed by the band. Super nice individuals as well as incredible musicians. And it is an album for an acquired taste. If you're into alternative and indie and a little bit of elements of pop punk and punk rock in there, 
I definitely recommend checking this out. And if you're not a fan of those genres, then still check it out. Give it a chance. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Laura Jane Grace from 2018. This is Bought to Rot. Fantastic album. And number 20, show a recent pickup. I haven't showed this yet, and I'm going to show it again in a future Vinyl Finds video. But for right now, all of you will kind of get an exclusive sneak peek into that. This is The Third Mind. I originally saw this album, I think it came out at the beginning of the year. I originally saw this album and got a review on this album from Mazzy. He was talking about it. And then I put in my Amazon cart. And then it disappeared and went away and I forgot about it. And then Steve Carlson about a couple of weeks ago showed this on his Instagram and talked about it in a video. I remembered it and then I finally picked it up. I cannot wait to give this a listen. I have heard nothing but good things about this album. I am super excited. So that is my response to Vinyl Tag 2020. Those are my 20 answers to the 20 questions. I hope that you all enjoyed this video and I will see you all for my next. Bye guys.